What's going on YouTube family? I have an absolutely insane video for you guys today. Today we're going to be talking about why a majority of the dealerships across the United States have been shut down because of a cyber attack and now the hacker group out of Eastern Europe is asking for 8 to 10 million dollars ransom before they turn their software back on. Now I'm sure you've seen this all over the news. People are literally losing their minds. They can't buy their cars, they can't sell their cars, they can't do any service, they can't order parts. All these things are ran by one particular software which is called CDK. And a lot of our software systems in the automotive business tend to be an all-in-one system. Now this is a great thing because it makes it simplistic, it's all in one spot, but the downfall is, is once one thing goes down, they all go down. And then now we're in major trouble. And that's what brings us to today's story. Now CDK was originally hacked on June 19th. The hackers got in and was able to take over the software. They shut everything down, hoping that this would get rid of everybody. They winded up turning it back on, and then they had a second cyber attack where they basically took control of everything and locked them out of it. So now, what can CDK do? They're being forced to pay eight to $10 million. Now, they're not letting this out and, and basically saying that they're paying the ransom, but they have no other choice because there are hundreds of thousands of dollars every single day going to the wayside. And I hate to say it, there's so much money at risk, they will not let this be figured out by the government or some state entity. They're probably just gonna pay. Now, with this coming is gonna come with a lot of good things and a lot of bad things. Now first, like I said, our automotive software is literally 10 years behind just about every other technology. Most typical softwares seem to be broken up in different fragments or uh, compartmentalized in different areas, where our software is kind of all in one. So the best way I could explain it is imagine three rooms back to back to back. And the only way you can get through one room is to go through, open up the door to get to the next room. Now, all those things are broken off in their own individual sections. So if a hacker gets in, they can shut one door and the rest of the system works. So if they would have got in through the service side, you could still do sales, you could still do parts and figure out those problems on the service end. But unfortunately, once they got in, they were able to take over everything and they shut it down. So now that's why it leads to dealers not being able to buy cars, to write contracts for financing, they can't do finance and service contracts for if your car was in the service shop. So if you're trying to uh, get your car out of service or take your car into service, there's nothing they can do. And I've seen tons of reports all over the United States of people frustrated that their cars are either fixed or torn apart and there's nothing they can do because they're all reliant on this one particular software, which is absolutely crazy. Now, as a small independent dealer, we have backup softwares, we have actual manual templates that we can use to continue on deals. Now, I've had power outages here in Vegas, I've lost internet, I've lost power, and we still gotta continue on with deals. We had a small generator at my shop, we had what's called an Oki data printer for all you old school people out there. This was an actual typewriter contract printer that would print out a contract and I could submit that to a bank as a supplemental contract just in case if my power went out. I even had a little stencil for my uh, temp tags so I can print these things out and send them out. But unfortunately, I thought with these big multi-million dollar dealerships, they would have some sort of a backup plan if something like this were to happen. Because believe it or not, losing the internet, losing your power, stuff like this happens quite often. So how did they not see this coming and how did they not have a backup plan? That's the thing that shocks me the most. Where I see dealers on a lot of dealer groups literally screaming from the heavens, talking they're gonna sue CDK and, and they're trying to set up somebody else's software and, and to transition from one company to another sometimes takes days, weeks, if not months to be fully trained. So it's not that simple to go from one software to another. And this is where we fall into the dilemma of the automotive industry being so ass backwards when it comes to technologies, when it comes to processes and procedures, it's, I can't explain it. If you work at a dealership, you know exactly what I'm talking about. They literally don't have contingencies for shit and it absolutely blows my mind. So now dealerships across the United States are losing millions of dollars having to wait for these guys to pay the ransom. Now, unfortunately, they said that they were gonna be back up in a few days. A few days led to a week and now they just made the announcement right before I made this video that they're not gonna be open till probably the end of the month. Now, cyber experts have been all over the news talking about how they don't believe they're gonna be open till the end of July because even after they pay the ransom and they get the site over, they have to plug all the holes basically of where these cyber attacks came from and that's gonna take weeks if not months to do if they pay somebody really good and a company to do this. So if we're thinking the same way these cyber experts are talking about, we're talking what, another 45 days before some of these dealerships are back open again and we're talking hundreds of thousands, if not million dollars a day lost. Who's gonna pay for this? 
I know a bunch of dealerships are going to sue CDK, which is unfortunate. It's not their fault. They got hacked, you know, and I know a lot of people right now are probably like cheering on the hackers because they took down a bunch of dealerships. But you have to remember, a lot of people's livelihood depends on this, not only for the software company, but as well as the dealership. So this is going to affect a lot of people. Now, what is this going to affect the dealerships moving forward? I think this is kind of a good thing because it's going to open up dealerships eyes to safety and regulations processes and procedures because like I said a lot of dealerships are 10 years backwards when it comes to technology and when it comes to processes and procedures they have nothing lined up for oh shit or worst case scenario so this opened a lot of people's eyes same thing happened back when COVID first hit when COVID hit I remember I was just sold my dealership and we were transferring it over and we had to figure out a lot of the banks closed a lot of the parts companies closed automotive dealerships and repair shops were considered essential so we were open trying to still fix cars, sell cars, and take care of customers, but we had nobody on the back end of the phone. We were calling for whatever parts or information or deals. Everybody was gone. Everybody was stuck at home. So that was a completely different learning curve. But we were able to make it through that with basically just time, effort, and some of the procedures we set up ahead of time just to make sure that we didn't have those problems. And so here we are with another one that's going to have ripple effects all across the automotive industry. So if you're looking at buying a car right now, I would probably suggest waiting a little bit just to let the dust die down and let all this stuff go by. Or if you're ready to go, you have cash in your pocket and you see blood in the water and you want to try to take advantage of one of these things, you probably can because I just talked to another dealer. They haven't sold a car in over a week. And for a franchise store, that's really bad. They usually sell anywhere from 20 to 50 cars per day. So they're freaking out right now. They want to move metal. So... If you don't mind risking and taking a little extra time to do some uh, old school written paperwork, you could probably get the deal done. But don't be surprised that when you start calling in for cars, parts, or service, you're going to be met with a thing saying, sorry, folks, we can't help you guys move forward. I also saw a bunch of funny ads saying, we don't use CDK, open for business. They're literally hanging banners out and posting them all over social media, which is pretty hilarious. Um, there's a salesman group I'm on on Facebook, and I'm watching salesmen literally get up and move next door to do their deals because that's another thing that people are not talking about that I wanted to address on this video. A lot of the people are actually paid through CDK as well. Some of their management software takes care of the hours, the billing, what they're doing, everything else. So how are these people gonna be paid? Because a lot of these people are living paycheck to paycheck. So if you're a car salesman, maybe you're a secretary, you're a parts guy or a technician, you know, and you're expecting a paycheck this week, what's gonna happen? You already know the ownership's not going to want to spend a dollar unless they can back something up. And so now you have people that are like, I want my check. I need my money. And they're telling you, well, I don't know. We don't know the hours you worked. We can't remember what you worked on because the software is down. So it's going to be a very big nightmare for people to get paid and actually prove it. So I foresee a lot of people basically leaving their jobs and moving here soon because of this. So like I said, the ripple effects, not only on car sales, service everything else, employment. I mean, it's, it's just an absolute nightmare. So it's pretty interesting to see how all this stuff is going down. And I'm hoping that other automotive companies are watching this and learning from this. But anyways, I'd love to know your input of what do you guys think of CDK actually getting cyber hacked? Do you think they should pay the $10 million ransom or should they just wait? Also, are you trying to buy a car right now? Are you going to go in there and try to make a haggle deal while there's blood in the water, while these guys haven't sold anything? Leave your comments down below. I'd love to hear from them. Um, also, once again, I'm almost done with my studio. We've got a few more things going, but my new channel is going to be called Lucky Not So Lucky. I figured we'd throw that one out there. It'd be kind of funny, but we're going to give you more behind scenes. We're going to be fixing up this house. We're going to be building our new studio with our shop. We're going to have classes, online stuff, uh, links, everything in the description. Uh, I love you guys so much. We're super excited. we got a bunch of cool stuff coming, and i got a great video for you guys on Friday. We'll see you next time.